scattered showers on Wednesday, slight chance Thursday, more chances for the weekend. Welcome to our five on five. We're pleased to welcome back in former Southern Oregon legislator, now Secretary of State elect <laughs> Dennis Richardson. Good to good, see you. Congratulations. Good to be with you tonight. It's been it's been a week since election night. How, how you feel? What what's it been like for you? It has been like the beginning of six months of drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> I mean, um, immediately my phones were lit up and uh, emails and requests and uh, and well wishing. So many people were surprised and grateful to see that we can restore some checks and balances for the system to work the way it was intended to work uh, and, and to be more accountable and transparent and restore greater trust in the government. Uh, that's, those are the goals, those are things I wrote that mm -hmm. I ran a campaign on and those are the principles that we'll work to implement. The first Republican to win statewide office since 2002, it's been, been some time. What does that mean to you and what should it mean to the state GOP? Well, it should mean that there's hope there's too many people that think that, um, you know, that it couldn't happen. But for me, from Southern Oregon, with my background, uh, and to be able to win the second highest office in the state and to be second in line for governor in case something happened to Kate, uh, that's, it's very significant. It helps show what's taking place in our state as well. Uh, the largest and fastest group, the fastest group of growing numbers of voters are the non-affiliated voters. And so we've always had this two-party system, but that's changing now. And so you have a lot of non-affiliated voters and independent party voters and minor party voters that need to be convinced and shown that their votes count. And part of what I do as Secretary of State being over the Elections Division is to ensure that everyone gets a vote uh, who's eligible to vote. You've spoken to Governor Brown. What was the tone of that conversation like? It was great. She gave me a call. Just uh, We've known each other since I went in the legislature in 2003. Sure. And she just wanted me to know that if there was anything that uh, she could do to help me or any help in the transition, she's there. And you were in Salem yesterday. It, it, what was that day like? Were you, you busy in the offices or are you taking care of personal effects? I was looking for a place to live. Sure. And then also meeting with my transition team. Uh, my transition team chief of staff is Dave Dodder which many people know from mm -hmm. his run uh, for Senate and his work for two years as my assistant when I was co-chair right. of Ways and Means. And I have great confidence in him. And so he and two others are handling the, the transition details. And that allows me to spend the time learning what I need to be doing, being on the phones, talking to individuals and uh, other. This morning I was on the phone with the South Dakota Lieutenant Governor for about 40 minutes talking about transition and, mm -hmm. and how it takes place. And I've got two or three other calls from national leaders that are willing to help. Yeah, get some good advice, never, never a bad idea. We're gonna take a quick break. Uh, much more in a moment, stay with us.
Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Oregon Secretary of State-elect Dennis Richardson. Congratulations again, Dennis. Yeah. Before we move forward and talk about the future and your plans, so I want to take a bit of a step back. Tell us about the campaign. Brad Avakian uh, chose to go very negative at the end there. How did you feel about that? Well, I expected it, and, and but I had told my campaign team that he has to draw first blood. If he stays positive, we stay positive. But if he's going negative on me, then we have to be able to respond. And so actually, the commercial I did where I started off by pointing at the, the television set and talking about Avakian going negative and bringing out what his history was, I did that about three months ago to a blank television, state, uh, television set hmm. knowing that he would go negative and then we'd put up there what had happened. So we were ready when it happened. Uh, and it, it helped to be able to punch back. The people needed to know that I'm not this radical, extreme person that they painted me out to be, which is what happened at the end of the Kids Hopper campaign as well. And so we were able to show that, uh, that I'm a, a thoughtful person. We'd worked for a year to try and work on solutions and show people who I am and that I will utilize the role as Secretary of State to do what the, the position is supposed to do. According to the Constitution and, and the statutes, I want to be able to implement and, and administer the laws that are passed by the, the legislature and the governor and not try and expand the power of that position. You have uh, quite a few daughters, a large family, a lot of grandkids. Is you going to be able to get everyone there for the swearing-in ceremony? What's that going to be like? I hope so. Uh, we have you know, one son and eight daughters. One of my daughters is in Amman, Jordan, yes. and with four grandchildren. And I don't know if they're going to be able to make it back. <laughs> that might be too much. But I think everyone else will because this is an important event, uh, not just in my life, but, but for the state to have restored the checks and balances that you have when you have someone who's a fiscal conservative who's focusing to ensure that the people's money is well spent because that causes the bureaucracy to have to be more careful. And so we're going to have a party. We're going to invite the state to come to the swearing in. It'll probably be the last few days, you know, we don't know the exact date yet, of December, so it'll be during Christmas break, mm -hmm. and you know we'll have food and and uh, everybody that comes if they want to bring their family they can do tours of the capital. It's the people's capital, but too many times the people don't take the opportunity to come, and so the inauguration of the new Secretary of State will be a perfect opportunity. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.